Tonight, there is something that's going to be said or done that's going to make the lost come to you. We just surrender this moment, this time before you right now. Spirit of the living God, yes, fall fresh among your people. In Jesus' name, lift your voices and give God a praise in this place. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 As you take your seats, turn your attention to the screen. We have a video we want to share with you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father God is amazing. Our Jesus is amazing. And I like to say, you're amazing. Could you turn to someone and say, you're amazing. Turn back to someone else and say, you're double amazing. You are. I just love you. I'm excited to be in church on Wednesday night. How about you? I'm Pastor Cal. I'm thrilled. Something so special about Wednesday night with our children and teenagers. And it's so tangible. How many just walked in here? When you parked your car, you could sense that Jesus was waiting. Harvest Music Alive, let us right into that presence where the joy of the Lord's our strength. And Jesus is right there, and the Father is saying, Hi, kids, how you doing? And so Wednesday night, 218 on our calendar all the time. You may know somebody in our family here at World Harvest, and they, they may, you know, got busy and forgotten about Wednesday night for them and their family. I want you to do something because we love them so much, whether it's a text tonight or a call or tomorrow or you see them at work or wherever it is and just say, hey, Wednesday night is your night. It's our night together because God, our Father, does the supernatural on Wednesday night and will never be the same. And we have people that we work with or go to school with or live close to or stand in line at or behind them at Starbucks and they're in front of us and we can say, hey, you're special and I want to buy your coffee and come out to our Wednesday night service. Can someone say that's all right? It's, uh, we don't want to miss what God's doing, and then he's so tangible, and this isn't happening everywhere in the world. It's happening here. The presence of Jesus is so real, and it's just exciting to hunger and thirst after God that we have. I want to say thank you for that, because we're called to be addicted to Jesus, addicted to our Father God with everything we have, with our passion and emotions, our intellect, our desire, our imagination. Our five senses are all for Jesus, so thank you very much. It's exciting what Father God's already doing this evening. I'm so thrilled by all of you and thrilled by the entire team here at World Harvest Church. And I want to thank God for Pastor Tim who leads us in the local church all the time. Give Pastor Tim a great big, we love you. And all, all of the team and the elders, but Pastor Tim, Tim, you just lead us as a local church together, marching for Jesus. And one area that Pastor Tim has so put in us this year is that area of our our prayer and fasting and praying strong for each one of us in the church, all of us together as a family, praying for our team, praying for our pastors and the first family. And I want to thank you for that because not only Jesus said it, the apostle Paul said it, we see it all through the old covenant, new covenant that we're called to watch and pray. Let's say watch and pray. And watching is that watch men and watch women and watch teenagers and children. Then we're on the wall every day. We get up, we say, number one, I'm watching for my Father God. I'm watching for my Jesus and the Holy Spirit to come on in. But I'm also watching to stop the enemy. He will not have anyone in this church. He will not have our emotions. He will not have our desires. He will not have our energy and our giftings and our love for Jesus. And he will not have our pastor. Our spiritual father. Apostle Paul said, you got many teachers out there. and You can buy their books and their tapes and that's good. But there are not very many spiritual fathers. And we know last, last week that we're so thrilled because our pastor, though there was a vehicle accident 
He walked out of that supernatural. Healthy, strong, alive, our spiritual father serving Jesus, loving us. But I want to encourage us, there's a little bit more watching and praying that we're going to do. Because we are not in a picnic, we're in a battlefield. And we've said, Satan, we're possessing every mountain, we're taking every hill, we're occupying till he comes, and get out of our way. So we need to pray, to watch, and thank you for that. And the Holy Spirit says, pray this day, pray it that way, for our pastors and the first family, for everyone in this church, because we're taking this city for Jesus, this country, and this world, and the enemy can't stop us. Let him do what he wants, but we'll stop him in the prayer closet. In Jesus' name, can we stand just for a minute? Thank you. Father, we thank you for that presence and anointing that's upon us, that we are the watchmen and women on the wall. As Jesus said, watch and pray. We thank you right now that we just cover our pastor. Dr. Rod Parsley, Miss Joni Ashton Austin, we cover them and we say, Satan, back off. In Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus is around our spiritual daddy. We thank you, Father God, for that strength, that protection, that anointing, everything that you have. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We've riled up the enemy. He's already on the run. We're getting the lost, the spoil of, to the kingdom of God and to Jesus. And we just watch for everyone in this church, this special family. We pray for each other, watch for each other, bless each other in prayer every day, and get close to our Heavenly Father in fellowship with our Jesus, for that is eternal life. We thank you for that anointing we have, and we are those on the wall. In Jesus' name, we said together, give Jesus a big shout. His victory is ours. Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna be seated, but that, that, that just means we get to be seated in expectation and faith. Turn to your neighbor and friend and loved one and say, this service is for me and for you. You know, 2018 is an exciting year that we've come in and I know we use those words, but Father God has appointed and ordained this year for each one of us, for all of us together at World Harvest Church, for everything we do to make this world better for Jesus. But tonight we wanna to see some specific areas in our life one thing that we are so blessed that we're getting out to the world and we thank God for all those that, the hundreds of thousands and millions that will watch through online. Give them a great big, we love you. And they watch this tonight, this week, next week. They're getting Jesus all over the world and that's because of you, thank you. But there are so many tonight that we're gonna let Jesus change our lives because 218 is not just a, Another year, it's not just one year closer to whatever. Many times we think a year is just one year closer to what God has for us. I've got great news for us. This is the year God has for us, and it's already started. When I was in high school, I was on the, the track team, and I was a, a, a sprinter, but I like doing cross country instead. You'll get lost in cross country, and 20 miles later, get on a bus and get back, and nobody knew it. Don't tell them that. But I was also on the sprint team way back then, and that was a long time ago. And I, I, you know, the big thing was is that we needed to be, I needed to be coached better coming out of the blocks, you know, when the starter's pistol went off. I, that wasn't my strength. <laughs> I wanted to tackle somebody, not just run. But the thing is, is that we were, you know, we, we did okay. I did terrible at that. But in the kingdom of God, we find out that God has called us, that the starter's pistol has already gone off this year. And we're running. And it's, it's not going off in March or July or September. It's already started on January 1. So let's pick some things up tonight because this is new. And we want to call tonight, the now is new. Let's say it together. The now is new in Jesus. I'm so glad you brought your Bibles tonight. We're going to go 
to Isaiah chapter 42. We're going to read verse 8, 9, and 10 and kind of stay a little bit there and just go where the Spirit of God has us tonight. And we want to grab tonight the areas that the Spirit of God in His tangible way is working on us and that our God is an almighty God and He just doesn't want to be talked about or read about. He wants to live and allow us to experience Him in our life and everyone in our city in their lives and in our world. Isaiah 42, verse 8, 9, and 10. I'm going to read out of the voice translation of the Bible. Verse 8 says of Isaiah 42, I am the eternal one. God's speaking and he says, I am the eternal one. I am the Alpha and Omega. I'm start, I'm the end, I'm the middle. I am everything you'll ever need or want or desire. I'm he. Then he says, I am is my name. Now, now he says, hold it. He said, I got a lot of covenant names in the Bible. But he says, I want you to add this one. He said, my name is I am. He said, my name is not I was. My name is not I might be. He said, my name is not maybe I will be one day. He says, my name is I am. I am whatever you need now. I am your healer now. I am your salvation now. I am your joy now. I am your goodness now. Let's say he's my I am. So a lot of times we put some bad things behind his name. We say, I am not feeling well. No, but that's not our God. He says, my name is I am. Sometimes I've said, I'm not doing very good. He says, hold it, hold it, hold it. When you use my name, you can have what you say. And he says, my name is I am. So start to speak that I am, as he said to Moses. And, and, and way back there, he says, I am because I am because I am. And he says right here, I am everything you will ever need or everything you'll ever desire. He said, I am. He said, the enemy's not I am. He says, I am, I am. And he goes on to explain it just a little bit right here. He says, my beauty is unique, a weighty splendor all my own. And nothing else, no idols could possibly get my praise. Now, a lot of times when I grew up in Sunday school, which I'm so thankful for, and my wife did, we did together, that, you know, we kind of were taught that God is, you know, we, could, we didn't know what he was. He was someone way up there that nobody ever knew. But he says right here, he's just real practical. And he says, I'm, 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 I'm the best of the best, he said. He said, there's nobody like me. When he walks and goes by the mirror and looks in the mirror in heaven, he says, that's perfect. And he's not afraid to say that. And then our Father, God, as he's there, he says, he says, there's no, no idols that can come close to me. He said, get close to me. You'll never have an idol. He, he's, he said, I'm just not trending. He says, I am the trend all the time. And so that's what he's saying there. He's not afraid to talk like that. So let's not be afraid to lift up and glorify our Father in our personal lives, family lives, home lives. And wherever we go, let's talk about the great I am with everybody because he is the great I am. And he lays that out for this year in 2018. And then he says this, look here. Let's all say, look here. He's grabbing our attention and he's saying, this is our God. He says, for 2.18, he says, I want you to look at me, he said. I don't want you to look at the problems. I don't want you to look at the situations. I don't want to look at the, you know, look at the media. He said, I want you to look at me, he said. I want to tell you something. He said this like a verily, verily, that when Jesus said that, you knew that it was double important. Right here, God, our Father, saying the same thing. He's saying, look here, he said. I need your attention. And on Wednesday night, he's saying, look here, guys. Look here, girls. And he's saying, here it is. What's done is done. Well, this is going to set us free. What's done is done. At the count of two, can we say that together? What's done is done. Tell somebody it's done. And now what he's saying in this year, now we need to grab this because this, this tries to bite our ankle and hold us down and chain itself to us all the time is that the past is done. No, the past is done. Your past, my past is done. But I did this, God. I don't deserve this, but God, you know that I forgot about this or you know what happened in my life. And he says, don't bring it up and quit rehearsing it. He says, what is done is done. 
A lot of times we come to this year and we said, man, if I only would have been better in 2003 or 1992, whatever it is, or even yesterday. But he says right here, he says, what is done is done. And what he's saying is to each one of us, our father says to have all he has this year. He says, I, I, I don't care what you did. I don't care what you ever did. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't shake me. It doesn't move my needle. It doesn't change my love for you because nothing can separate us from the love of our Father every, every day of our life. But as we are in this 2018 and the starter's, starter's pistol of heaven has gone off, he says, hey, World Harvest Church, every one of us, he says, what's done is done in your life. He said, I don't care about it. Don't want to I don't want you to lift it up. I don't want you to bring it to my ears. I don't want you to think about it. I don't want you to imagine it. He said, it's done. It's done. And he's really saying, I love you just as much as what you did or didn't do that we thought was good or bad. He said, I love you. He said, you can't please me any other way except by being who you are. And I'll change you is what God said to us. Let's say it's done. We're home, oh man. We're, we're ready to go this year. And then he said, it's gone. Let's say it's gone. It's gone. It's dead. It's finished with. It's not that maybe my past is leaving on a jet plane to John Denver. It's out of here. It's not maybe there's 50 ways to leave your lover. The devil's not our lover and our past isn't either. And it, it, there's no, you're gone. It's done with. It's over with. So we got a fresh slate, but we have to really say that in the mirror sometimes to ourselves, We have to say that to the enemy. We have to say that to others sometimes that try to bring up the past. We need to say, hey, in my father, he loves me so much. Jesus loves me so much. What's done is done. And he don't care about it, so I don't care about it. I will learn from it. I will go on, but it is done. And I will quit rehearsing it. And it's gone, it's over, and I'm going forward. We all know what, why Paul said, he said, he said, I forget those things that are behind, he said. I rip out that rear view view in my life and I'm not looking backwards, I'm going forward. He said, it's done. And that's so important. We see that as we're running this year, 218. Then he starts to lay it down. Next part of that verse, in verse nine, he says, the now is new. He said, the now is new. He said, it's brand new. It's now. It's not tomorrow. It's not a year from now. It's not 18 months from now. Father God is saying, 2018, the now is new. We know that the number eight talks about brand new starts and brand new beginnings and freshness. And we see that in 2018. And he says, for everyone, the now is new. We get to have the slate wiped clean. We get to realize that everything we enter into is now brand new. Father God's got so much for us this year. And as we're already starting to paint on, in our imagination and inside of our heart what God has for us all, we can put that down. And he says, you know what? The, the now is, is, is new. And then he says this, and there's hope in the not yet. Oh, I like that one. How about you? How many have heard this inside of our vine, or maybe on the outside? It's not yet your time. It, not, not yet. Not yet can you be blessed. Not yet can you be used by God. Not yet can you be healed. Not yet can you be married. Not yet. Not yet can you be free or liberated. Not yet. Not yet will that dream come to pass. Not yet. And we've lived in the not yets, whether we realize it or not, for most of our life. It's not yet time. It's not yet going to happen. I used to be taught, and, and I loved them all, but my Sunday school teacher used to tell me, well, if God's not yet going to answer you. And he says, hold it. I'm bringing you a hope in the not yet in 2018 because everything's brand new. So the Father God has seen tonight the Holy Spirit stirring inside of us. What areas of our life over the last year or five years or 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, however young we are, that we have lived in the not yet's? 
The Spirit of God is saying tonight, he said, I want to show you and extract right from inside of us all the not yets. And he says, this is now the year for those not yets to come to pass and for us to walk in the manifestation of them. And, it matter, and we may have never thought about that, but we heard that our whole life. And then all of a sudden, we start to mimic it and say it, not yet. It's not yet going to happen. It's not yet right. The economy's not right. It's not yet going to happen. And God says, yes, it will. You, I'm giving you a hope in the not yet. And your not yet will become now and new. And you'll walk in them every day. That's what our Jesus does. So, so in the next few minutes, let's lay down two or three things. that Father God is saying is ours in 2018. Number one, because he's God, because he's our almighty God, because God's name means action and creativity and motion and birthing and life and freedom and liberty. That's what his, life, his name means. It doesn't mean someone sitting reading a library book that looks like they're not alive. It means every, when he thinks things are created. And so he says, I want to be that in your life. He said, I don't want to be that religious symbol that we've put there our whole life. He said, I'm alive and I'm real and I'm your daddy. And let's have some fun this year like we've never had before. And bring others into that fun called the kingdom of God, God's family. That's why it's the good news. Number one, this is the year of acceleration. This is a year what seemed to be held back is now being accelerated. And what's an example? It doesn't matter what our speedometer says in our cars. Everyone's used to miles per hour here. I'm used to kilometers. Kilometers aren't quite as fun. I like miles per hour. If you, if you drive in Canada and you're going 100 there, that's only a kilometer is only 60 miles an hour. So things just aren't quite the same. But what we see is that there's a governor. Let's say governor. All the cars got governors. You can only go so fast and all of a sudden just stops. It doesn't matter if that thing says it can go to, it can go to 180 miles an hour. They might put the governor at 105. And we can push it and, and get out of the car while it's going and try to run it and push it more. It's not going to go any faster. And in our spiritual life, we've been the same way. There has been governors. And those governors may have been some tests and some problems and some trials and some heartache and some hurt and some pain. It does not matter. Or we thought things were going to go a lot faster than what they did. And God is saying, you know what? It's all come to this point. Things are now new. And he says, the governors are now off. And he says, it's time for acceleration. And in this acceleration, it's going to bring promotion. Let's say promotion. God's our promoter in 2018 like we've never seen him before. He's in our corner and he's backing us. And he says, let me be your daddy. Let me be your God. He says, I really want to see, let you see things happen like you've never seen before. And because of that, we were in a whole new season of change. Things have become new. What was dead is now alive. What was old has become fresh. What wasn't happening will now start to happen. And we start to see this year with that acceleration, we're going to see such promotion, such breakthroughs, such victories, such joy, such love, such excitement, and those things that some of us have been praying with all of our heart and intercession for years, God is saying they will now come to pass. Not because how good we are, but because how good he is. He's our God. He's our daddy. And he said, I want to accelerate those things in that he wants to stop every delay. Let's say delays. This year, the delays are gone and they're off. They're finished. And it's a, it's a family like us the world have a harvest in church that we're agreeing together. No more delays, no more holdbacks, no more hindrances in our life because too many people make a religion about it. In a 4,552-part series of life, and that's not the way our Father does it. So this year we're going to find out, thank you, Jesus, the delays are gone. The delays are finished. Isaiah 40 and verse 10, let me just read it out. Verse will be on screens behind me. It says, the Lord, the eternal, comes with power, with unstoppable might. He will take control without question or delay. He's saying, let me take over. He said, I will do things without question and without delay. He will see to it that wages are paid, repairs are made, and all is set right again. That's my God. That's your dad. He says, that will happen. That will happen. Sense it in the air tonight when we walked in. Presence of our daddy saying, I want to do it. I want to do it. He said, there'll be no more delays even. 
Habakkuk says that God gives us a vision. And though there will be a delay, yes, there will be. That was God's delay saying, hold it, I'm preparing you. I'm holding you back. I'm training you. I'm putting things together. He said, but after that time is done, then it will not delay the vision of God's purpose for our life. And that time is done. And 2.18, God is saying, you will walk in it. No more delay. Let's say it. No more delays. Last one here. Things, things are about to happen immediately. Too many people have a faith in the long suffering. Too many say, well, over the rainbow. Oh, when I, get, when I get to be 110, get to be 110, when I'm 120. Well, just to get there might be a miracle, but we're just not going to go. Oh, someday it's going to happen. We're in the immediate the Bible said that when the Spirit of God came on Samson, immediately he became strong. Immediately he became strong. Jesus is asleep in the boat, and the storm comes up, and all his disciples are scared that they're going to die and drown. And they wake Jesus up, and Jesus gets up, and he can't figure out what's the problem because he said we're getting to the other side, and his word's going to come to pass. He gets up. And he says, peace, and be still, and be quiet, and do all that. Stop. And it said immediately. Immediately. Let's say immediately. immediately. Stopped. And immediately they were at the other side, several miles away, right at the beach. Immediately. And finally there was a story in Luke 7 where Jesus is coming into the city. And it's a great big funeral procession. And a young man, not even his prime, a teenager had died. And the, the mom was broken up. And Jesus walked through there and he, he stopped everything. Sometimes we've been a little too nice as Christians. A little too quiet. He says, oh, let's stop the procession. He says, come on, look at me, everybody. My God's about to do some things. My father. And, and, he, and he, the, the guy's dad, the teenager, and everyone's crying. And Jesus comes over and touches him and holds his hand. And he says, son, listen to me. Get up. And it said immediately. Let's say immediately. immediately. He got up. Shook and shake. Everything's, whoa, what's going on here? And tonight, our Father God is saying, as we finish this, He's saying in 2.18, it's going to be brand new, and it already is. He said, don't ever allow the past to be brought up. It's done and gone, and God don't care about it, and neither are we. He says, the now is now new. It's brand new. It's fresh. It's strong, and God's best is with us. And he says, I want to accelerate my promotion and my increase and my harvest and my blessing and my strength and my salvation and my peace and my joy and my favor. And he says, this year, watch it. The delays will be taken out of the way. We'll be repaired. We'll be made whole. We'll be set free. It'll be made right. And God says, I want to do it immediately. Because he's got so much this year. It's not all about us. It's about getting the lost and the hurting and the broken and the bruised. And to bring the prodigals in and those that no one else loves, Jesus loves and we love. He said, I'm going to do it immediately in your life. Let's stand together right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. There is a freedom that Jesus is just pouring out tonight that's so real. You can just cut it with a knife. And on this evening, we're saying, 2018, I, I came to church tonight, and the Holy Spirit just filled my tank up again. That it's new this year. And it's a brand new season. And God will accelerate in all areas and delays are stopped. Can we lift a hand up, Father, right now in Jesus' name? You love us and we're understanding it more and more and we're still getting inside of it. And we thank you for it. We're getting lost in it. And tonight we thank you that 
we're not waiting to December 31st to have all that you have for us this year. It's now because every day is brand new. Your mercy and your blessing is brand new every day. We thank you that the delays are done with in Jesus' name. Whatever that delay is, start to shake it off right now. Start to shake it off and say, you don't have me. You don't have me. Now start to see those answers for your loved ones, for your life, for salvation. It's time for immediate salvations, immediate turnarounds, immediate breakthroughs and victories. And Father, we thank you for that. Start to see it inside your imagination right now. Start to see it. Start to grab it. In Jesus' name on this Wednesday night, we allow the Spirit of God to start to accelerate and to start to bring the immediate presence of our Father God's love and Jesus' salvation to our life. We thank you for that. No more playing this game that goes on forever. We got checkmate tonight in Jesus' name. And we thank you that everything's brand new in 2018. In Jesus' name, give Jesus, let's do a big shout of praise together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's be seated just real quick because we're going to do something that's going to stir what God has for us. And I want to read, I want to read this out because there is such a manifestation of what God has for us. When the Lord brought back the captives who returned to Zion, we were like those who dreamed it seemed so unreal what God's done in our life this year. That our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for those at World Harvest Church. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Turn our freedom and our captivity and restore to us our fortunes now. Let's say now. Verse 5, they who sow in tears shall reap in joy and singing. He who goes forth bearing seed and weeping. At needing his precious seed, his very best seed of grain, not to sow and not to eat, but for sowing, let's say sowing, sowing. shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his harvest with him now. Paul says in Hebrews, faith is now. It's now. Many times we live in a mindset that someday it's going to come to pass. Someday it's going to be here. I want to tell you what would take God or what would maybe take something 25 years could happen in 25 minutes. You know, we, we, we think it's going to take so long, but faith is now, today, right now, January 2018. And I want to tell you something. There's an old thing that we say in the Pentecostal church, get under the spout where the glory comes out. And I want to tell you something. There's anointing in this church that we never want to take for granted. We've been here less than three months, and stuff is shaken on off, off us. We can't even explain, and yet, um, and yet we can sometimes won't even notice it. I'm, I'm sure, um, even a year down the line, or even a month down the line, we never want to take for granted that's the the anointing that's in this place today. The glory of God is in this place today, and we don't want to take it for granted. And and this doesn't happen in every church. This doesn't happen, and. Your miracle is on its way. And it's, how many of you have ever heard this saying? It's in transit. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's in transit. It's on its way. And you know what? I sense it's right here, right now. And did you know, did you know that God can bring your miracle in a storm? You may be in a storm right now. God can bring it. We all think I have to clean ourselves up and whatever. I'll, I'll be okay, la, la, la. No, God will bring that to a storm, through a storm. He'll bring it in a storm. Sometimes Daddy and I, my husband and I, we feel like we woke, died and woke up in heaven in this church. I'm like, how you doing? I'm from heaven. This feels heavenly here. I mean, number one, the weather is just like heavenly, so that, that, that really helps, but the anointing is here. You just feel like the presence, the music. You guys are so kind. Do you know how kind you are? Did you know that your smile can just bring someone to go from sadness to incredible joy? Make them have a good, your smile has done that to so many people. Just your kindness. 
That doesn't happen in every church. Yeah. In the natural, I'm not dead, but I'm alive. But I sometimes we feel like it. Hey, babe, we're like, oh, this is heaven on earth. Don't ever take it for granted. But I want to tell you, there's miracle working seed right now. And just like um, the weather changes, Genesis says, it goes from winter. And I come from a country where you see all the different seasons. But I want to tell you something. Your harvest, um, you can change your harvest tonight by the seeds you sow in. So whatever you want to make happen in your life, you need to start sowing seed towards that. Start sowing seed. And you know what? It can happen in one day. Did you know I was just talking to someone in this church? She's sitting right, right over there. And she said, this is what she said, took one service. And it just takes one day, one serve, one Wednesday night service. You're not even here Sunday. Wednesday night service. And she came into this church. She didn't know her name. She didn't know how to say her name. She was on drugs. And she was depressed because of the drugs. She sat in the service just for a few hours, sowed a seed of $1,000. And she walked out of this place, no more drugs to this day. No more depressed. And she knows her name. Okay, I want to tell you something. That doesn't happen in every church. Her life is totally changed. Her kids are in the Christian school. goes on and on and on. I know there's many testimonies like that. But I want to tell you something now. God wants... Uh, to make your now the new now. He wants to do it inside your life. And right now, pastors and ushers, come forward with your offering envelopes. And As Psalms 126, their whole life was turned around yeah. like a dream from captivity, and their now became freedom and liberty, God's people. It's because that last verse or two shares how it happens by taking that precious seed that we could use for something else. Yeah. Oh, the tithe is God's. We know that. And tonight, thank you for bringing our tithe tonight and we're bringing it online. Thank you so much. And we're going to have envelopes passed out and give by texting at WHC45777. But I don't want this just to be, we're going to walk out of here and then go for coffee somewhere, Tim Hortons together. I like that. I'd like to meet you there. But but the thing is, is that tonight the precious seed is going to turn things around and accelerate. Tonight. Stop the delays, take tonight. the governors off, now. and bring immediate now. salvation, yeah. breakthroughs, now. prosperity, That's and it. promotion. Because our Father God wants to do it yeah. now. And he loves our obedience of love and faith and trust as we get ready to sow our precious seed, which starts with our tithe, but then it goes beyond that. And we say, hey, I got the 90% left over, belongs to God. And what can I sow tonight that will bless God? And for all of those online, you're with us right now. We don't want you to miss it because God's changing and promoting and increasing. If you need envelopes, raise your hand. I know they're right in front of you right there. If you're doing credit cards and all that area. But I want us just to let the Spirit of God inside yeah. just be yeah. a check mark of that yeah. supernatural seed, the yeah. most breakthrough generous seed we've given this year yet. You could be one declaration away from your miracle. Just one more confession. Just one more. I'm new in Christ. It could, that's all it could be. Sometimes we quit just before we get to the answer because we get weary in well-doing. Hey, if you're weary right now, that means, guess what? The harvest is right now, and it's right in this house today. And how about ushers? How about you stand up here? Hey, that's good. And we're going to bring the seed up. That's good. But I want also, I want to say, too, so you, you could be away from one sowing a seed to your incredible miracle. Well, I'm not going to do it on Wednesday night, and it's just Wednesday night. It's halfway through the service. This could be your night. This is it. This is Just like night. one declaration can change your life around. Also, Jesus, one seed sown today could open up the door for you to get that answer to the That's government, right. that answer on, at maybe a, you need a mortgage payment or something to happen at the bank. Maybe you need wisdom on the job. Maybe you need a promotion. Maybe you need an upgrade. This could be the seed that does it. You never know. Someone pulled in their pocket, pulled out 25 cents, threw it in the offering. Of course, we know we don't throw it in. It's called what? Spirit-directed seed. So they began to seed. Do you know the next time we saw them, they came back, they opened up the mail, right, babe? And right. in the mailbox, there it was. It was uh, incredible inheritance. I think it was around $20,000 in inheritance. That's all they had in their bank. Is, was that, and their that by the time we saw them next time, $20,000. Now, God's not going to whisper, okay, this is the night, this has got to do it. No, it's all by obedience. 
And that's all it is, is, obe oh, is obeying God. You know that precious uh, vessel in this house that got blessed in one service? That's all it took, one service. Some people are, are believing God for a lifetime. Don't you love that little girl's faith? One service. Did you know that's all she had in her bank account? She emptied it that night. Maybe you're tonight just emptying your bank account. This is your service. This is your miracle. This is your, this is your what? Holy Spirit. Your now service. This is today. And we're saying bye-bye to the past. And you're going to see God do great things in your life. As you plant that seed here today, you, you begin to see that door open up. And you begin to see your life turned around because there's anointing in this house today. And I'll say it and I'll say it. You come to this church, you are going to get blessed. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand. We're going to stand because I know we've been filling out things. But let's stand together right now so we get in that expectant mode. We're going to come down, and as Jan was saying there, the Spirit of God said that we're going to see immediate household salvations as we wow. sow tonight. Wow. Some have had husbands and wives and children and grandchildren and aunts and uncles been for years. You're going to see it in this month of January and even this week coming to Jesus. There are men and women here that you've been crying out for promotion, and it has been stopped for years and delayed. You're going to wow. come in this, yeah. this week and this month, and your promotions and all that you put your hand to in business and jobs and in your sales and in your companies and Thank in your you clients Jesus. are Thank all going to come to pass in Amen. schooling because Amen. of what you do tonight. Amen. There is such a spirit Amen. of acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to say, wow, I got blindsided Amen. by the goodness of God again. Amen. That's what he wants to do. Are you ready? Amen. Pray, Jenny. Father, we thank you for this great house. God, we count an honor and privilege. I know, uh, Kel and I, we don't take it lightly being on this platform, God. It is a holy place. Father God, you're so here. many great men and God and women you, have stood on this pulpit yes, and will God. stand on this pulpit. And God, we just stand in their anointing. Thank you for, the, for our pastor, Parsley, Father, that Father is so full of the Holy Ghost, God. And we just thank you right now as every one of this beautiful congregation sows their seed today. Satan, I want to remind you, you do, you have no power. We declare right now, you have no power, no authority. And we release those promotions and increases and healings and salvations. And God, we just thank you. This house is full of miracles. This house is full of anointing that transcends all over, Father, this whole uh, city. And Father, it transcends into our businesses, Father. And people are like, how did you get it? Where did you get it? And Father, we get to say it's World Harvest Church. Ha, 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 ha. The time has changed, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hey, we're not even halfway through the month, and you already have your miracle. Isn't that neat? You don't even have to wait till the end of the year. We're not even halfway through the month. Isn't that great? So run on up here. Don't just la, 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 la. Run on up here and drop your seed. The time for acceleration, time for blessings. I dare you to clap your hands with us like this. Come on. Let's worship together as you're giving. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it out. Hey. It makes my spirit sing. Your grace, your grace, so oh, I hear it call my name. I'm waking up to sing. Let's sing. Oh.
If you enjoyed the ministry of Pastor Kyle Switzer tonight, let him know it. Show him some love. I don't know about you, but I am ready to take the governors off and accelerate into what God is doing in my life, not just throughout 2018, but Pastor Cal right now. Amen, amen. We're so excited that you could be with us. If you've joined us online tonight, thank you. We love you. Make sure that you're here at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. Pastor Parsley is bringing an unbelievable word on amazing power. It's going to be unreal.